Please open to page 295 in your student journals. In the second part of section 9.4, we're going to continue completing the square, but now we want to complete the square not to solve the equation using square roots, but to give us vertex form, which will help us find our maximum or minimum values. Let's take a look at question number 20. In the first part of section 9.4, our equations did not contain a y equals. Our equations had maybe 0 equals, or 5 equals, or 16 equals. It had some number equals. And then we had our x squared plus 6x plus 10. Our process of completing the square does not change now that we have a y equals there. Let's go ahead and go step by step. The first thing we want to do is we have to move our constant, that c value, to the other side of the equation. Remember, to complete the square, we need the squared term and the x to the first power all by themselves on one side of the equation. So in order to do that in this case, we need to move the 10. So to move the 10 to the other side, we're going to subtract it. y and 10 are not like terms, so all I can do on the left-hand side is write y minus 10. On the right side, we're left with x squared plus 6x. Now we're ready to complete the square. Our first step to completing the square is we need to divide b by 2. Remember, b is the number in front of x, so in this case it's going to be 6. 6 divided by 2, I get 3. Our second step for completing the square was to take our value from step 1 and square it. 3 squared gives me 9. We then take our number from step 2 and add it to both sides of the equation. So we're going to have y minus 10 plus 9 equals x squared plus 6x plus 9. Let's do some simplifying on the left side. We have a negative 10 and a positive 9. So we're going to end up with y minus 1 equals and then we need to factor that right side. And remember, we can take a shortcut. We know it's going to be a square, so we can put our parentheses squared, x, and then our value from step one, or in other words, b divided by two. Now, to finish this off, we want to get vertex form. We're not going to take a square root at this point. We're not trying to solve. We have a y in there still, so we want to get vertex form. So we could, if we wanted to, graph this equation. So to get y by itself, to get our vertex form, we're going to add 1 to both sides. Now, where we add that 1 in, we have to be careful x plus 3 is being squared. I cannot add the 1 to the 3. The 1 has to get added on to the end. Now what we have is we have vertex form. Vertex form, hopefully we still remember from chapter 8. If I add 3 inside the parentheses, it means we go left 3. If I'm adding one outside the parentheses, it means we go up one. So if we go left three and up one, that means my vertex is going to be negative three because of the left three, positive one because of the up one. Now this question is asking us for the maximum or minimum value. We can tell this in one of two places. 
we could start at the beginning. If the number in front of x squared is positive, our graph is going to open up and we will have a minimum. So we could tell that at the very beginning of the question or once we get to vertex form, our x plus 3 quantity squared, the number in front of that is positive. So we know our graph will open up also. So we have a minimum value and remember the minimum value is just the y value at the vertex. So our process of completing the square has not changed. The only different aspect today, instead of solving using square roots after completing the square, we're going to have y equals to give us vertex form. Pick out our vertex and pick out our minimum or maximum value. Now if we wanted to, with vertex form, like we did in chapter 8, we could go ahead and do a full graph. We know our transformations, we know our vertex, we could find axis of symmetry, we can make a table and graph a few more points. We're not going to get that involved with it though. I just want to make sure you could complete the square to get vertex form, that you can still pick out your vertex and pick out your minimum or maximum value. One new idea for us though this section If we look at question 19, let's first of all tell if we have a maximum or minimum value. So is our graph going to open up or is it going to open down? The number in front of x squared we see is a negative. That number is negative. So that means our graph is going to open down. It's going to be reflected. So that means it has a high point, which means it has a maximum. Now since we have the negative sign, we haven't had to complete the square with anything at all in front of x squared besides 1. So we're going to start off the same way we did in number 20. We need to move the plus 3 to the other side. Since it's a plus 3, we're going to move it by subtracting 3. Now in order to actually complete the square, I need to have just plain old x squared. I can't have a negative, I can't have a 2 in front of it. So in order to make it an x squared, we have to factor out that negative sign. Or in other words, divide everything on the right side by negative 1. Since I divided by negative 1, I need to put the negative 1 out front. We're left with positive x squared minus 4x. Now I know you're thinking, Ms. Golly, why don't we divide both sides by negative 1? Well, dividing both sides by negative 1 is then in turn going to give us a negative y value and things are going to get messy on the left side. So we're just going to divide, divide out the negative 1 on the right side. Now let's continue though completing our square. Now if we look inside the parentheses, we have x squared minus 4x. We're ready to go through our process of completing the square. So step number one, we need to divide b by 2. b in this case is negative 4. So negative 4 divided by 2, we get negative 2. Our next step then is to take our negative 2 and square it. Remember, regardless of what your calculator says, anytime you square a number, the result is positive. Now step 3, we have to add that 4 to both sides, but here's where we have to be careful. When I add that 4 on the right side to complete my square, 
I'm really adding it inside the parentheses. So here's a new idea for us. I added it inside the parentheses, so really I haven't added a positive 4 to the right side, I've really added a negative 4 because I would have to redistribute this negative 1 out front. So I've really added a negative 4 onto the right side. I know that's a new idea for us. We didn't have to do that in the first part of this section. So that's basically our one super new idea today. Finding a maximum or minimum, does it open up or down, the process of completing the square, vertex form, all those things are review for us. So this is the one new idea for us to really, really focus on today. Then that left hand side, let's do some simplifying. We end up with y minus 7 equals, we still have our negative 1. We factor, let's do the shortcut. I have a square, so we have our parentheses squared, we have our x. We put our b divided by 2 in the parentheses, that was a minus 2. Now from here to get vertex form, we have to add 7 to both sides. We're running out of space, we're not going to do 25. So we end up with y equals negative 1 times the quantity x minus 2 squared plus 7. Subtracting 2 in the parentheses causes us to move right 2. Adding 7 causes us to go up 7. The negative out front causes our reflection. So our vertex, we go right 2, so that means positive 2. We go up 7, so that means positive 7. We talked earlier our graph was going to reflect, it was going to open down, so that means we're going to have a maximum value, and it's just the y value at the vertex. So we're going to have a maximum value of 7. I want to try one more of those. I want to try one more with the negative sign. So let's take a look at number 21. And I'm just going to kind of cap off number 20 here. So we have a little more space. Process starts the same. If you want to pick out maximum or minimum at the very beginning, you can. We see we have a negative sign. It's going to make our graph reflect, which means it opens down, which means we will have a maximum. We have to start by moving that C value. In this case, we're subtracting 2, so we have to add 2 to both sides. Again, the y and the 2, they're unlike terms, so I can only leave it as y plus 2. I have negative x squared plus 8x. Before I can start my process of completing the square, I need to make this into a positive x squared. So I can do that by factoring out a negative 1. So we're left with y plus 2 equals the negative 1 I divide it by gets written out front. I'm left with x squared. My positive 8x becomes minus 8x. Now I'm ready to do my process of completing the square with the expression that's in the parentheses. So step number one, we have to take our b value and divide it by 2. So we're going to have negative 8 divided by 2 gives me negative 4. Our second step, we have to take our negative 4 and square it, gives me 16. I have to add that 16 to both sides. 
So we're going to have y plus 2 plus 16. Then on the right hand side, whoop, hang on, sorry, we're not going to add the 16. I forgot we have that negative sign to worry about. So we're going to have the y plus 2 on the left. And then on the right, when we add the 16, remember we're adding the 16 inside the parentheses. That's where our expression is that we're completing the square for. So because that expression is in the parentheses with a negative 1 out front, I have really added a negative 16 to that side. We do a little simplifying then on the left. So y, we end up with negative 14 equals negative 1. When we factor, we can go right to the parentheses squared, x, and then half of b is negative 4. To get vertex form, we have to add 14 to both sides. And remember, when we add the 14, it cannot go inside the parentheses. The x minus 4 is being squared, so I can't add a 14 inside of that. Now I have my vertex form. The negative sign causes our reflection, which causes our graph to open down. Minus 4 inside the parentheses causes us to go right. Positive 14 outside the parentheses causes us to go up. So our vertex, right 4 is positive 4. Up 14 is positive 14. Since we open down, we're reflected. That means we have a maximum value. And it's just the y value at the vertex. So today, to be very honest, the new idea for us, the only new idea, is the idea of what we have to do when there's a negative sign in front of our x squared before we complete the square. That's going to take the most getting used to. When you get to step number three in completing the square and you have to add the square to both sides, we have to keep in mind that if we have the negative sign, we've really added a negative value to both sides. That will take the most getting used to, I guarantee it. So at this time, let's go ahead and try out the progress check. Use any of the notes you want to on this. Ask me any questions that you need.